Good Wednesday evening, everyone. It is March 15th, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, severe weather coming tomorrow for Thursday. Uh, all modes are possible for tomorrow. And then a bigger cold front coming into the region uh, late tomorrow into Friday, and then plowing southeast uh, as we go through the weekend. Texas, you're going to get nailed this time as well with cold weather, freezing frost, uh, uh, freezing temperatures, frost potential, um, all in the cards uh, for you all. Okay, so if you're watching on, on YouTube, hit that thumbs up, that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It is free to join. Hit that all on notifications and you will be notified every time we post content or go live on YouTube. Now, if you want to support us as well, on YouTube, hit that join button. There's there's plenty of ways to support the work we do for you all. Also, if you're on Facebook, uh, so we have Supporter Hub over there. Also, Supporter Discussion uh, Facebook page as well. And we go over a lot of things we normally don't show in the public pages. Also, go over long-range content, first dibs and seasonal content, uh, like I said, we got a hurricane outlook coming up in a few weeks. Um, giveaways, all kinds of stuff. So if you want to support the work we do, there's different ways to do it on Facebook and also on YouTube. All right, let's get right into uh, the current weather. As always, we start out with the current hazard map. And here comes a storm system that's coming into uh, parts of uh, Arizona, we have flood watches, warnings all the way through uh, northern Arizona into, into Nevada. Um, also, winter storm warnings up through Colorado, parts of New Mexico, and through Utah as well. Um, we had a couple tornado warnings also uh, this evening in Arizona as well as this dynamic storm system is starting to come in. And you probably noticed tonight, especially if you live in the south here across uh, basically Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, um, parts of Oklahoma, uh, southern Missouri uh, this evening. You saw that the, the winds were starting to get gusty out of the south. That moisture return is starting, starting in already. And then this cold air is starting to work its way out of the southeast. Look at this. We have we have freeze warnings all the way in the northeastern parts of Florida. Also, all of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, frost advisories out for uh, Alabama through uh, northern parts of Florida. And this is, like I said, this is just a precursor of what's coming um, as well. So we're going to warm back. We're going to warm up temporarily tomorrow and uh, and uh, Friday out east, uh, southeast here, uh, before this big front uh, comes through and delivers a massive blow to temperatures of 20 to 35 below normal uh, is coming. Up here through the Midwest, uh, through uh, min basically Minnesota, and across uh, the upper Great Lakes here, uh, winter storm warnings and uh, winter weather advisories out for Nebraska into northwestern parts of Iowa and uh, southeastern parts of South Dakota. Now, that nor'easter has finally wrapped itself up. Amazing snowfall. Uh, some areas got a, basically a season's worth of snowfall just yesterday, and they've been complaining all season that they haven't got anything. So now, all of a sudden, bam, they've gotten, uh, some areas have gotten their average for the year and above that in parts of the northeast 40 to 48 inches of snow uh, i saw some reports of a lot of 36 inch 30 to 36 inch amounts as well and that might not be the the only time they get snow they they have they might have a couple other chances coming um, in the next few weeks i uh, went over that uh, went over the storms and uh, possibilities um, in the supporter hub on facebook all right, let's get into severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has upgraded parts of southern, southeastern parts of Oklahoma, northeastern parts of, of Texas, including Dallas, in an enhanced risk 
On the other side of that, uh, slight risk. So the enhanced risk basically covers Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Garland, and up towards uh, the Red River and just uh, into southern and southeastern parts of Oklahoma. Now, uh, slight risk for Houston, Texas, San Antonio, Austin, Shreveport, Louisiana, over towards Monroe as well, up towards uh, Texarkana. Uh, Texarkana is actually under enhanced risk. So you go up towards Hot Springs, up to Fort Smith, over towards Norman, Oklahoma, Wichita Falls, Waco, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, all under a slight risk for tomorrow. And then marginal risk on the other side of that. So we're looking at about 28 million people uh, in, involved or are going to be um in the line for some severe weather uh, tomorrow, uh, basically Thursday night, Thursday afternoon into the night. Uh, so, like I said, there's enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms over much of northeast Texas, southern Oklahoma, and into the Arklatex. Scattered severe thunderstorms per- capable of producing large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes appear likely, especially Thursday afternoon and evening across parts of the southern plains, and some of the hail especially over uh, over um, south central Oklahoma and north central Texas could be very large. We're talking probably in excess of two plus inches in diameter, which is the size of hen eggs to uh, tennis balls uh, size hail. So that's what to basically expect tomorrow. Let's go over the risks real quick. Here's a tornado risk in the brown, basically 5% chance of seeing a tornado within a 25 mile radius any of any given point in that brown area outside of that the green is a two percent chance of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point in that green area as well straight line wind risk is a little bit greater uh, we got that 30 percent area basically in the in the enhanced risk area uh, probability of seeing probably a 60 to 70 mile an hour winds in that area is 30 percent, uh, 30 percent chance of seeing those kinds of winds within 25 miles of any given point, uh, 15 percent on the outskirts of that, and then five percent um, on the other side of that as well. Now we have a significant risk of very large hail, like I said, from basically golf balls to hen eggs to possibly tennis balls, uh, maybe a little bit larger than that, uh, across this hatched area. And uh, Dallas is in the bullseye for this. Uh, and just uh, north of the Red River there in Oklahoma, straight north. Uh, so significant severe uh, hail is possible in this area tomorrow. Um, on the other side of this, and the other side of the hatched area, you got a 15% likelihood of seeing a one-inch diameter hail or larger, but anywhere in that black hatched area, right in here through basically Dallas, you're like so you're the epicenter epicenter here um, of uh, possibility of some very large hail in excess of two inches in diameter. Like I said, it's hen eggs, possibly tennis balls. Uh, so watch out for that as this big time front comes through, and then we're gonna look at. We're going to look at uh, future radar here in just a second. Now, here is uh, the outlook for Friday. So this is basically mid-morning Friday through most of the day Friday into early Saturday morning. Marginal risk uh, across the deep south here, including parts of uh, of uh, Louisiana into southern uh, Mississippi, Alabama, southwestern parts of Georgia, Slight risk uh, for the Florida Panhandle right along the Gulf Coast in uh, Alabama through Mississippi and including New Orleans in southeastern parts of Louisiana. All modes of severe weather will be possible as well. Uh, Biggest risk will probably be straight line winds. Can't rule out a, a tornado or two in this area as well. And large hail is also possible as this big time cold front starts screaming southeast just in time for the weekend all right here is the rainfall over the next week uh through next uh wednesday evening uh general one to two possibly locally three inches across eastern parts of texas all the way through 
uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, parts of Mississippi in the southeast. That front's going to be just driving through the area, stall somewhere down here in southern Florida, and they're going to get a lot of rain. If you are going on vacation for spring break down in the, this general vicinity, cooler, way cooler than average conditions, uh, lots of rain, beach weather is probably not going to happen uh, across uh, that area. The the water temperature is going to be way warmer than possibly the air temperature at times. Uh, like I said, we've had frost and freezes up here in the panhandles the last few days um, with temperatures getting, like I said, in the 30s and low 40s at night. Um, that is not optimal conditions for vacationing and wanting to get to the beach. That's for sure across the southeast. Okay, so big time cold. Uh, it's going to have like one day of reprieve before this next front comes in uh, Friday. And then um, the colder, uh, way colder than average air is coming across the area. All right, so here's HRRR. This is a 00Z rod, and this goes all the way for 48 hours. Uh, so we're going to look at that. Can anybody see where that front is at about 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon? Just marching its way through Kansas, uh, through Oklahoma, into the panhandle of, of Texas here. You have falling temperatures, morning highs, basically, uh, and then falling temperatures all day long in the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, you get just south of that front. We're talking 80s, uh, possibly a 90-degree reading across southern parts of Texas. So a uh, big time 60 to 70, possibly 80-degree temperature difference across uh, the state of Texas uh, tomorrow. Um 60s, 70s, starting to warm up across the south. Like I said, this is just a reprieve of uh, what we've been dealing with the last few days. Like, like I said, it's been 15 to 20 below normal across most of the southeast over the past few days. Like I said, a little warm-up coming uh, tomorrow and Friday before this uh, system really starts uh, going into the area. Look at this, 80 degrees tomorrow, uh, latest, latest data in is 80 degrees around Dallas and then it's going to be going this is at five o'clock and then you go to 10 o'clock tomorrow night it's in the 40s so almost a 40 degree temperature drop within about six hours uh, is possible across the Dallas metro area uh, late tomorrow so that's just a sign that just shows you how how uh, potent this front is and it's going, it's screaming straight south into Texas and southeast as well. So this is one, two, three, four, uh, five o'clock, six, seven o'clock Friday morning. You're in the 30s, and you were just in the 80s at 5 p.m. on Thursday. So within about a 12-hour difference, you're going from right around 80 to 81 degrees down into the upper 30s. Uh, pretty quickly so um, and then below freezing just north of the Red River uh, then uh, teens to 20s up here in the Kansas uh, Kansas area and like I said here's that front marching its way southeast across uh, it's already cleared most of Texas except the far southern tip down to the Gulf now and then it's sweeping southeast through uh, Louisiana into Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, as we get into the early morning hours of Friday. Um, and then, like I said, severe weather will be possible down in this vicinity right along the Gulf Coast and into Alabama and Georgia as we head into later Friday afternoon. Uh, but you can see what the highs could be possibly on Friday uh, across Texas here. Look at this. 50s, possibly some upper 40s possible. 48 maybe for a high in uh, Houston. Uh, crazy, crazy weather. Like I said, this is going to be 25 to 35 below average in spots. Uh, it's going to be a huge root of awakening uh, for people, especially in Texas. You have not seen the cold yet. Southeast has gotten some of it. 
Now you're going to be into it as we're screaming through phase eight, getting into phase one now, which opens the door for more colder air um, as the phases go to one to two as well uh, through central and southeast. That southeastern ridge, like I said, uh, I've been saying this for about a month in the supporter hub. Southeastern ridge is going to get a beat down mid to late March was going to open the floodgates uh, for cold and all these plants, bushes, flowers that came out. Uh, it's just spelling trouble for a damaging, killing freeze. And that's already been happening across the southeast and more is yet to come across the area. So this only goes out to about 7 o'clock on Friday. So you can see 30s. Uh, Kentucky, parts of Tennessee, uh, down in the deep south, 40s, uh, 46 Monroe, 47 in Shreveport, getting into the 50s, low 50s at that in New Orleans, and then banking up against the mountains here in West Texas, here in the 30s, probably have some upslope that possibly tries to develop out here, and you might have some snow. Uh, we'll look at that here in just a second. So let's take a look at future radar. I'm going to look at the central area here first. Then I'm going to take a look at the southeast. All right, so here's 5 a.m. Thursday. You can see where this system's at. Lots of uh, snow in the higher elevations of, uh, of Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. And then snow and mix breaking out into uh, Nebraska. And you saw those winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories out. That's going to scream up towards Minnesota. And then as we go out throughout the day, uh, here comes the severe weather starting to break out across uh, the central part of the area here, across the southern parts of uh, Oklahoma. And then these things really start getting going in, in Texas. Uh, some of these could be supercells. Uh, like I said, if anything gets out here by itself, it has a potential uh, to produce uh, all modes. Like I said, uh, huge hail. Uh, in excess of two inches diameter, like I said, hen eggs, two uh, basically baseball to, to tennis ball size across parts of Texas and southern Oklahoma here. So this is 6 o'clock tomorrow evening with this front just racing across the area. And I would not rule out to see some flakes fly across northern parts of Oklahoma into, northern, into the panhandles of Texas. As we get late tomorrow, meanwhile, you're going to be in the 60s and 70s very early in the morning and then crash throughout the day. So I wouldn't, like I said, I would not be surprised to see some sort of, of snow flying up here behind this front as the temperatures rapidly cool um, ahead of it. So 7 o'clock, we got a nice little line of storms basically from Arkansas all the way through southeastern Oklahoma into Texas here. Um, looks like it's finally storm. Finally, the storms are getting through uh, parts of uh, Dallas around eight to nine o'clock tomorrow night. Lots of heavy rain through Arkansas, southeastern parts of Missouri, and then here's some snowflakes might maybe flying across southeastern parts of Kansas, heading into far western Missouri as we go into a late tomorrow night into the early mornings of Friday. Very heavy rains and possible uh, severe weather still ongoing across the south here. And a big squall line develops and then just drives uh, south here. Now, the HRRR is trying to have some kind of mixed precipitation uh, 7 a.m. on Friday morning across central parts of Texas here. Um, as you can see, there's some there's some snow in the higher higher terrain of western parts of Texas as well. And then all that severe weather is trying to get going out here towards the southeast and the Gulf Coast area. And you can see some of this upslope that's developing across very uh, western Texas. And some of the higher terrain could see some mixed to snow across um, that area as you head into late Friday across that, that part of uh, Texas. All right, I'm going to show you all this anyway. So here's the HRRR snowfall uh predictions 
I would say maybe at most a dusting, maybe a little bit more across uh, the panhandles here. And then far northern Oklahoma into southern parts of Kansas here. Maybe, like I said, you'll, you may see some flakes fly through this area. Uh, accumulations will be in question uh, in that part of the region. And most of, some of this down here in western Texas will come on Friday. But a lot of upslope is possible across the New Mexico into southern parts of uh of um, Colorado, uh, one to two feet possible in the higher terrain up there. And then here's the snow with those winter storm watches or warnings and advisories that are up. And then all the way up to the Great Lakes is going to get uh, slammed up here by Lake Superior. All right, here's a little bit closer view of the east. Um, so this is Friday morning, 3 a.m. You see these line of storms coming through basically right around Monroe, uh, Louisiana. Uh, just southeast of Shreveport, tracking southeast pretty quickly. And then as you get 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, the line kind of dissipates just a little bit, but the atmosphere is reloading out here towards uh, Alabama, Georgia, uh, Florida, uh, Panhandle, Florida here, right along the Gulf Coast as well. Um, you can see these storms uh, trying to develop and then really forming a line as it comes across now like i said this model only goes out to 7 p.m on friday but i would assume after this these storms are going to continue to track southeast go through most of northern florida through most of uh most of the rest of georgia as well so like i said next few days stay weather aware have a way to get warnings big time hail and tornadoes uh, possible tornadoes across um, Texas, southern Oklahoma, into parts of Arkansas, northwestern parts of Louisiana as well. Has the greatest risk tomorrow afternoon and through tomorrow night. Now I want to show you some of these temperatures. How cold could it get as we head into next weekend or this next weekend? All right, so this is temperature anomalies. This is basically just for Saturday. Uh, like I said, look at this, 30 to 35 below average across deep south Texas. Um, most of the rest of the area, probably 10 to 20 below average. And then another reinforcing shots coming down. And uh, you can see here, um, really gets uh, another reinforcing shot is coming uh, probably late Saturday across uh, the north and probably southeast here. While uh, western Texas, with all this upslope that's happening, uh, big time cold, possibly as much as 40 below average across western parts of Texas, uh, southern Texas. Uh, so some pretty significant cold is coming uh, for Texas as well. And then uh, kind of lightens up just a little bit as we head towards uh, late uh, Sunday, but uh, most of the rest of the area is 10 to 20 to 25 below average across all of the forecast area. So uh, what, are we, what are we looking at at frost and freeze uh, wise for this weekend? So these are possible lows on um, Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Deep, a lot of 20s, basically north of the Red River, all of Oklahoma, most of Arkansas is freezing. You got frost conditions probably down into Louisiana. Most of uh, northern three quarters of Mississippi, Alabama, into northeastern parts of Georgia. All of Tennessee is in the mid 20s or below, and uh, Kentucky is in the low 20s or, be or, be or below that. I would almost the way the way I saw uh, this last cold shot. Uh, some of these areas got uh, uh, three to four, maybe five degrees colder than guidance. So. I would almost rule, uh, I would almost say you need to knock off a few degrees off, off these temperatures at least across the area. I think, I think a lot of these temperatures possibly in Texas are too warm as well. Uh, so I think frost and freeze is possible even into northern, northeastern parts of Texas, uh, northern parts of Louisiana as well, and then the southeast is going to get it again. Um, as we go through the rest of the weekend here, let's let's go out to the east here, and you can see uh, back here in the east. Here comes the frost and freezes right back in. Uh, this thing's got 28 degrees at, at in and around Atlanta. Um, 
teens pretty quickly up into the mountains um, of North Carolina uh, through the mountains of Virginia and West Virginia, freezing basically interior Virginia through uh, North Carolina, South Carolina as well. And low, look at these low temperatures all the way down to Florida. You're in the mid 50s, which is very cold for them. Um, and then low to low 40s possible across Florida. Like I said, guidance was way too warm this past cold shot. This is even a, a more significant one. And like I've always said, models suck at true Arctic air. Uh, so I would take off a few degrees off this. So I think frost and freeze is going to be likely in most areas um, this, uh, this weekend into next week even. And I went into that more in depth on the supporter hub and how long this cold could last. Uh, could it last through the rest of the month and into April? Uh, we went over that in a lot more in detail in the supporter hub. So uh, that's what's to come. Uh, let's take, uh, let's basically uh, wrap this up and I'm gonna show you again the severe weather that's coming. All right, so here's the wrap up basically. Severe weather tomorrow afternoon uh, through uh, tomorrow night uh, across uh, much of uh, northeastern Texas, southern Oklahoma into the Arklatex. Enhanced risk of severe weather. The out outside of that, a slight risk. So basically in the enhanced area, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Texas, Garland, Texas, up towards Texarkana and far south, uh, southeast parts of Oklahoma. Okay. Scattered severe thunderstorms capable of producing large hail damaging winds and a few tornadoes appear likely Thursday afternoon and evening across parts of the southern plains. Some of the hail could be very large over south central Oklahoma into north central Texas. This is including Dallas. We're talking two inches, two inch in diameter plus hail is possible, which is the size of hen eggs to possibly tennis ball size hail uh, is possible across this area. All right here is the outlook for Friday. Basically right along the Gulf Coast, southeastern parts of Louisiana, into southern Mississippi, Alabama, into uh, like the Panhandle of Florida. Slight risk of severe weather here. All modes are possible. Marginal risk on the other side of that. This is for Friday ahead of that big cold front that's going to be plowing, starting to plow through the region uh, tomorrow. Okay, so stay weather aware. Have a way to get warnings. Um, just get prepared because after this, it's going to get cold and frost and freeze is going to be likely even into Texas now, uh, as you get, um, get the cold coming into Texas instead of going towards the Southeast. Now it's going to go into Texas and move Southeast. Like I said, that Southeastern Ridge is gone. So this cold air will plunge all the way into Florida. And I just showed you that with, with lows. In the, in the upper 30s to 40s possible all the way into the Panhandle of Florida. And frost and freezes, like I said, is going to be likely across most of the area. Basically anywhere from I-20 and north, I would say. Maybe lower than that. Um, if, if models are wrong, which they have been on cold air, I would not be surprised to see maybe some frosty conditions as far south as I-10. Okay? Across the area. All right, that's all I have for now. Like I said, stay weather aware, stay safe tomorrow. Um, this weather was gonna, this weather's going to come in in a hurry. Don't be fooled by tomorrow. Tomorrow's weather across Texas, where you're going to be in the 70s, 80s, and possibly 90s across the far south. You're going to get a 40 to 50 degree drop off between tomorrow's highs and lows Friday morning across parts of Texas here and. Don't be fooled across the southeast either. Friday, tomorrow into Friday, as you get a warm up ahead of this warm ahead of this cold front, um, and then temperatures really rapidly drop off behind that, creating for a very uh, colder than average um, weekend. Um, outside activities are going to be um, pretty rough this weekend if you don't like cold weather. Okay. All right. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Click all on notifications and you will be notified every time we go live 
or post um, anything, any content on YouTube. Thank you so much. Stay safe tomorrow. Stay weather aware. Have a way to get warnings um, for tomorrow and Friday.